Hey, this is much better. Hold on a second. It just said we went live. Yeah, I know. Everybody, and welcome to Build It Through Culture Live. I'm Rob Genovese, and uh, well, friend, everybody, and we are. Hold on a second. You got feedback there? You got feedback? No. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what the what just anyway, happened. It's okay. But this is Build It Through Culture Live, and my uh, culture collaborator Steph and I come at you every other week or so, and uh, we're talking about all things culture as it pertains to business. Network branding company. We devise brand strategy that helps you stand out in the marketplace. And then the other kind of thing, I don't want to say the side thing because it's not really a side thing, right? This is kind of the other thing I do um, in Master Networks, uh, diving deep into culture, talking about what it takes to make a better environment for people. And I'm going to let my culture collaborator here introduce herself. Go ahead, Steph, if you're ready, pull yourself off mute. And uh, tell us who you are. Good evening, everyone. Stephanie Bellafado. I am proudly, I proudly serve as the president of the Carmel chapter of Master Networks, as well as being on the national and regional culture and retention team and an area director in the New York, Connecticut, New Jersey region. And I represent Surpro. Uh, we're your local disaster recovery specialists. We clean up all kinds of disasters you don't want to clean up like fire, water, mold, biohazard, crime scene, vandalism, you name it, we take care of it. So we're so happy you guys are here tonight. Yeah, very excited. Who we got in the house so far? We got Angela. Hey, Angela, Ang. how you doing? Thank you for coming. So, you know, I, I, my, my descent is Italian, right? So Rob Genovese, but I'm from the suburbs. So, you know, it's not really, but when Angela comes in the room, it's Angela Ferrari Cantatore. Like she is. <laughs> Italian. Yeah. And and she did her <laughs> showcase last night. So like her parents, her mother is lives in Italy, right? Oh, wow. They moved here and then they went back to Italy. What a beautiful moving presentation she gave people. It was very emotional. It was amazing. And nice. look, you know, you're Genovese and I'm Bella Fado. Hey, yo, why you over here? <laughs> hey, Rachel. Hey, hey. How you doing? <laughs> It's always Rachel's ever supporting. Mary Ellen, how are you? Yeah. Good to see you. Rock stars, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you guys that. for always coming. Hey, Chris. I think that's the, the greeting of the day is hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey Donna. How you doing? Good to see you here. Thank you for coming. Nice. I don't know what's nice. We haven't said anything yet, but thank you. Appreciate it. So it's great. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And, um, you know, as usual culture thing which people don't really understand a lot about and it's the reason we're here and you know if you're joining us and you you don't really know what this is all about like what's the deal why are they here talking about culture and how did this come about you know i love this story because um in master networks it's the culture that has basically helped form the membership it's the environment that's been created in a way that Tina Campbell, regional partner in New York, Connecticut, um, all started with her. She she intentionally created that in a way that she thought people would benefit the most. And so, as you know, she and I were talking um, quite some time ago because I kept asking her about it. I'm like, what what is the deal with this? Why why does it feel one way in one chapter and different in some other chapters? And it wasn't always a good thing. Like, what is the deal with that? So she would explain the culture. I'm like, well. What we need to do is we need to figure out the formula and bottle it and be able to pour it out at will. Yeah, we want to spread this around. So, guys, if you're on this live right now, please share it to your page so that we can we have a bigger reach. If all of you share it to your family and friends and people are questioning like. Uh, you know, master networks, or they never, maybe they never heard of us or, or maybe, maybe they're considering a networking group and, 
Or maybe they've had a bad experience in the past. And when we say, oh, would you like to come check out a meeting? And they say, oh, another networking group? Like, you know, um, I've been a part of those before. And that really hasn't worked out for me. But, you know, Rob and I were talking Good about impression. <laughs> We were talking about this the other day. And you know what? When we have guests and visitors that come to and we say to them, well, just come check us out. And then you you decide from there. Right. Experience it and give them the experience and then let them decide. Yeah. And oftentimes what we hear is, oh, my God, like you guys have so much energy and you guys really care about each other and you really want to help each other. And we're like, yeah, and they're not used to that. Right. So they're spread. not because, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but you know, we're, we all come usually from other networking groups where it's so not like this. And I don't know why we become so weird when we we're in business now. Right. So we're people when we're hanging out, you know, you're hanging out at a barbecue and you know, you're having a drink, you're eating some food and you're a normal person. Hey, good to see you. My name's Rob. My name's Seth. And you talk and you're normal. And you're talking about, hey, so where do you live? Hey, you know, you, you got any pets? Oh, I love dogs. Oh, you love country music? Like, it's normal. And then you get into a networking group for business. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, business. Hi, I'm here for business. We're going to do business. Great. Let's talk about business. It's it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and look, we just had a regional event. It was our kickoff party, right? We were supposed to have this event in January. And because of the pandemic and, and numbers were spiking, we pushed it for the safety of everybody. And we had it this pa a week ago today, right? Yeah. We had over 220 people at that event. Why? Because we love each other. We want to be around each other. We want to spend time with each yeah. other. Yeah. I just got to say this. Uh, you know, I missed this from Mary Ellen before. She's Italian too. So <laughs> you, know, you, you don't go, have to be Mary Italian Ellen. to participate. It just right. helps. <laughs> right. Right. No, you know, listen. Kidding. And um, my friend Lulu. Lulu and I just had a face-to-face -face, uh, yesterday. Was it Lulu or the day before? I guess I don't know. The week's going fast, but Lulu, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Hey, if you guys are coming from other states, please tell us what state you're coming from. What state, oh, what really chapter, yeah. what chapter you're coming from? What chapter are you a part of or what state yeah. do you live in? Hey, Let Teresa. us know. Ah, Teresa Safali. Hey, Glow. Coach Glow. Glow's in the house. Glow. Glow just came out with a new book. So, you know, you guys go out there and get Coach Glow's book. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, I just happen to have it right here. So there you go. Coach a girl Coach from Coach. Southern Boulevard. Let's, let's plug, okay. So it's Coach there Glow, you go, friend Coach. of ours. She wrote this book, A Girl from Southern Boulevard. Let me tell you something. It's a nice quick read, which is good for a guy like me because I'm not that smart. But what a story. I love overcoming stories. I love overcoming people who, you know, they have great um, obstacles in life. And they overcome and they win. She, she's a flat out winner. So you want to pick yeah, up that, she's, that great story. Yeah, she's amazing. We call her Coach Grow around here, right? <laughs> so, grow. so we you love overcoming. Hey, Karen. Karen, Karen, Karen. We're sending you lots of love and healing prayers your way for a super speedy recovery, my friend. Karen, who's amazing. She just yeah. had double knee replacement last week. That's why she wasn't at the event. And she was kind enough to give me her ticket. Yeah. Well, we missed you, Karen, for sure. Heal fast. Heal fast. Hey, Jessica, how you doing? She's hey, excited. Jessica. She's excited. She, wants, she wants to hear more about culture. Thank you for coming by, Jessica. And <laughs> Justin, ever so Justin, my man, Justin. I was just at an event with him earlier before oh, yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we're both on the chamber, our local chamber board, and we had an event earlier. Oh, nice. Nice. Good to spend time with people in person. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It is nice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this whole Zoom thing has got people kind of wigged out still, I think. And the, the weird part is I still talk to some people and they just they still have a hard time with it. And look, I understand that I'd rather be in person with you, Steph, doing this stuff or or anybody that I'm doing something with, you know, um, you know, if, if Justin and I were doing something like we want to do it in person, but yeah, Justin, but that's what we can you have. Steph, you guys are like an hour away from me. Right. And so look, and that's the beauty, right? So for those of you like, listen, 
if you're questioning, oh, doing an in-person meeting or doing a Zoom meeting, I got to tell you, Zoom has been the saving grace to all of us here in the Northeast because, you know, this pandemic started here, right? The numbers were explosive here. We were all on lockdown. Hey, everything happens in New York first. <laughs> yeah, whether we yeah. wanted to or not, right? <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing. This gives us all the ability. First of all, we don't have to find space, right? You have space wherever you live, there's space, right? So you don't have to find a space. Secondly, you don't have to travel. And right now with gas prices being what they are, I saw Chris Januski put a post on Facebook today saying, I looked up the blue book value of my car today and it asked me, was it a full tank of gas? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was great, right? Like, Much more value. <laughs> yeah, because there's more value right now. So like if you take into account those things, no travel time, hey, you could be going to so many different meetings and chapters and be connecting with so many more people, your reach is so much greater via Zoom. We're not saying not to get together, hmm. but get together and do a mixer, get together and, and have an event, but you don't have to get together for a meeting. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Michael Crawley, hey, looking forward hey. to the first time. Michael Thank Crawley, you, Michael. so for those of you that don't know Michael Crawley, he is in Canada. He's in Canada? Yes, he's I didn't in know Canada. That. I didn't know that. I just know he's the professor of prosperity. That's, That's right. And he lives in Canada. So he's here all the way from Canada. Do you hey, see the reach? Nice. Right? Look at that. Good. Thank you for coming, Michael. That's great. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> excuse me. You know, week to week, if you have to do business meetings, and I know our business meetings aren't exactly typical business meetings in Master Networks, but, you know, every week being on Zoom is okay. You know, you can roll out. Your meeting starts at 9 a.m. You roll out at 8.59. You roll in. Roll out of bed and roll right in if you have to. Right? Yeah. No commuting. So it's come as you are. And um, it's so it makes that week to week a lot easier. But then, like you said, when we got together last Thursday in person, man, that's, it was, it's so emotional. It is. It is. Because, you know, you and and I think it just brings us all closer together. Yeah. Look at Teresa. She was in North Jersey at eight and Brooklyn at Brooklyn nine. Brooklyn at nine. <laughs> there you go. That's right? impossible. Right. <laughs> not with Zoom, it's not impossible. Look, if you were in North Jersey today at 8 a.m., you'd be getting to Brooklyn by Tuesday if you had to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true, you guys. It's so Good. funny. But, yeah. you know, that's the beauty of all of this. So, hey, are you guys putting in the comments where you're coming from? Like, what chapter are you a part of? What state are you a part of? Please do that. And I don't know if you guys were paying attention to, you know, uh, Rob earlier when he was playing the music, but I hope you were paying attention. I think we had some technical difficulties there. It sounded a little weird on my end. Maybe I was getting feedback. Oh. I don't know. Okay. But, um, so that's event. all right. We'll play so, it again later. So listen, guys, this this is a um, a bare bones operation. <laughs> this is called <laughs> two laptops, two people, and hopefully good internet connection. Right, so, right. We try. We're doing our best here. We, we best. bear with doing us. <laughs> and by the way, um, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and go to the Master Networks Inc. page, which you're probably on now, most likely. Um, but like it. Go to the top and like it, because if you if you're not liking it, you're not being made notified. You're not notified of anything that's coming down the line in terms of more great content that's coming out of there. And, you know, I, I'm very honored to be a regional director for Master Networks, which means I get to sit in the room where, we're, where a lot of decisions are made and we can affect some change. And we're looking to put more content, more valuable content out through here, because look, for your membership, it's, it's number one, $49.95 a month. If you're a business owner, it's a joke of an investment compared to the value you get out of it on the back end is, is insane value. On yeah. top of that, we want to add more value because we know this is one of the best places you can be where you can level up and get anything you want out of this. So go ahead and like that page. Yeah. And hey, guys, if you haven't already done so, please, please share this right now to your page so that your friends and your reach is longer so people can understand what we do here at Master Networks. Yeah. Thank you, Lulu. Lulu's in Pennsylvania. She, oh, she's the president of the Exton Malvern 
PA chapter. Thank you, woo, Lulu. Woo, Lulu. Lulu here. And uh, Teresa, VP. We got a VP in Yorktown, team coordinator in Friday White Plains. So she's New York. You know her. Look who's in the house. Hey, Tina. Oh, Tina. There's Tina. Good to see you. She always comes. She, she always can be comes. Anywhere. She can I be know anywhere. it. And we're sending positive, positive energy to Dan right now, too. Yeah, I hope he's feeling better. Hope he's feeling better. And so, what are we talking about today? Oh, we I don't know. I think we topic. should ask the audience first what they think we're talking about tonight. They're not going to guess that. You <laughs> know what? I don't can... care. I, I want to see who think who thinks they know what we're talking about tonight. Who would like to venture a guess? Who's going to be daring enough to venture a guess as to what we're talking about? Let's see. Let's see. I want to see. In the chat. Let's put it in the chat. And, and hey, and... Uh, you know, another plug for my beautiful Miss Sammy Sunshine, you know. I always say we don't just do business here together. We do life together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've, you've said that for so long. And in the beginning, I was like, what is she talking about? Like, what does that mean? We do life, you know, and until you really get absorbed into the culture. And that only comes out of getting around because I talk to new members all the time. I mean, I just say new. I, I say mean newish. You know, they've been in for a, a bunch of months. And, you know, I kind of jumped in right away. You know, Tina said, hey, do face-to-faces. I'm like, okay. And, you know, within a couple of weeks, I was doing four a week in person. Yeah. But some people, they're, they're not getting around a lot. So they're not really getting the vibe of what we're doing here. And it's the, right, it's the only way you can really absorb the culture is by getting around, meeting the different people. Yeah. And, and making, not just making the connection, but deepening those relationships, right? fostering these great relationships and deepening them, right? Like, you know, we say all the time and listen, Tina will tell you all the time. It's the secret sauce because it is the secret sauce because yeah. you don't do business with people unless you know, like trust and respect them. And how do you get to know, like trust and respect them? You're not going to do it in one face to face. You might not even do it in two. It might take three or four. Right. Here, Angela says bond. So bond is, so basically, it's four steps if you were to just kind of isolate each letter, B-O-N-D, uh, four steps. But, you know, it's not like four face-to-faces and, boy, you've got yourself a relationship there. Yep. <laughs> right. It doesn't work like yeah, that either. That's really how it works. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm a really analytical thinker, so I had to change that. But I was always like, how efficient can I make this? Can we do this in two meetings and get it done and call ourselves buddies? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> right, can't do right. it. No shortcuts. <laughs> no shortcuts. Thank you, Angela. Already shared it on her personal page. Oh, awesome. Thank page. you, Angela. If you've shared it, can you please put it in the chat if you've shared this to your page so we know who's sharing? That would be great. Yeah, that would be, be really good. That would be helpful. <clears throat> so we got, um, we're going to wait for more subject matter to come oh. up. I think that's what Angela was saying. She, she thinks we're going to talk about Bond, which is a really good, you know what? You it's, know, it's a good guess because we really haven't talked about Bond yet. Right. So you know what? We can we could talk about it for a minute and say that look, bond is an acronym, right? And and it's an acronym and the B stands for build on a common interest, right? So what do you have in common? Do you have children? Where did you grow up? Tina will say, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are these things that you can ask, you know, what's your favorite sports team? Those are some things that you you might have in common. You know, um the O is, you know, occupation exploration, right? Like you know, what do you do? Just a little, not don't, don't do too much of a deep dive, you know, needs discovery, you know, Hey, how can I help you? Or, you know, what, what is your biggest challenge right now? How can I support you? Not yeah. how can I help you, but how can I support you? How, how is it that I can support you? And, and the D is develop the opportunity. So, you know, um, and that's what we do here in master network. Right. I mean, you want to get there, but, you know, you, you can't rush it there because that comes with trust and time. Uh, right. Thank you, Glow, for sharing. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for sharing. Thank you, Saini. Hey, Saini. Saini hey, shared Saini. It. Awesome. Rachel shared it. So thank you so much for sharing. We want to see how far we can get the reach because this is not about, you know, Steph and I are coming out of the tri-state region, uh, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey from Esther Networks. But this is a, a national topic. This is a national endeavor. We We never meant this to be just for our people in the tri-state region. And so that's why I so much appreciate people like Lulu coming uh, from Pennsylvania, because, you know, we want this to be spread across the country because everybody can benefit from what we're talking about here. I mean, 
Steph and I, we're not getting paid to do this, people. Right. We're doing <laughs> we're this because we love this. this, right? We, we, we love, love this, but we know your life is going to be better when you understand this stuff. Right. Your chapters will be better. Your business will be better. Your family lives will be better when you have a culture that you intentionally create. That's right. awesome. Thank you, Teresa. Appreciate it. Thank you, Teresa. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And and by the way, if, if you want to bottom line the culture, you, Steph says it all the time. Right. It's always the bottom line. How you make people feel. And and caring about what other people care about, right? Not just how, you know, when you, how you make people feel is to me first and foremost, right? If if you are warm and inviting and and when people come to visit your meeting and they leave better for it, right? And they feel energized and invigorated and and they get that warm, fuzzy feeling like, oh, this is nice. Like, yeah. you mean you mean I can be in a networking group and do business and have fun at the same time? We get that too. Like, you guys have a lot of fun. Like, yes. yeah, we have, because we like each other. Yeah. <laughs> the other part of that too is, you know, as, a, as an introvert and a former shy guy, you know, being self-conscious, right? So what do people think when you're self-conscious? Oh, you know, I, I'm conscious of myself. I, I'm not comfortable in my own skin. I'm, you know, I, I fidget. I, I can't really talk. Why? Because I'm self-conscious. Right. And that's exactly the problem. You need to be others conscious. Right. And you forget about yourself and you put it on, how is my behavior? How is what I'm saying? How is how I'm coming across. across making the other person feel? Right. How is what I'm saying making the other person feel? Not how right. I feel. Right. The weird thing is, when I learned that, I, I was not self-conscious anymore. But the funny thing is, when I was always concerned about how am I making another person feel? Am I making them feel welcome, at ease, comfortable? I had a mentor years ago. He said, Rob, you want to be like an old shoe, nice and comfortable with people. Yeah. Said, That's what you want. And so making other people feel comfortable, I forgot about myself. And I forgot to be selfish. <laughs> And that was the best. Yeah, part. I feel like, you know, it's like when someone enters your home, right? You want them to, uh, what, uh, at least for me, I can only speak for myself, right? When someone enters my home, I want them to feel like it's their home, that that's how comfortable it is. Like, you know, if, if you want to sit down on your on my couch and put your feet up, you go right ahead and do that, right? We just had this event and and look, Larry Blackman flew up here from Texas and he stayed with me for five days. We got, we had such a blast and we had a blast every day that he was here. We got together with somebody, you know, every evening or over the weekend, you know, it was a great time. Well, look, no wonder the guy flies up here so often. He's like, every time I go up there, it's like a party vacation <laughs> going out every night. <laughs> He probably went, probably went home and slept for two days. <laughs> yeah, well, I would have liked it too, but, you know, there was work to be done. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Alicia. Uh, speaking of the man. There he is. Lawrence. Lawrence. <laughs> I think it's so funny because he's so not a Lawrence to me. I guess it's just weird. <laughs> yeah. Damn right. Damn, Damn right. right. Absolutely. So, All yeah, right, so this is how you make people feel. And, um, you know, we, we should probably close in on our topic a little bit. What do we got in the comments here? Uh, yeah, I think somebody I think cheated somehow because we never released this, but somebody knew, and I don't know how she knew it. <laughs> Do you see it? Do you see uh, it? Let's see. I don't know, you guys. I think you guys should keep guessing. What do you think is, the topic is, it, is tonight? <laughs> Teresa, who does Rob's who hair? Does, no, that ain't the topic, Teresa. It's a short topic. Guess who does it? Rob. That's who does it. <laughs> that was quick. That was easy. Am I close? He just answered your question. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, look, nobody... look, Chris Janiski's uh, thing up there when we Where's were talking Chris? about. So, we went axe throwing over the weekend. So, there was a group of us that got together at, at, at Spins Bowl and we went axe throwing and we had. There was a whole group of us. Tina was there. Her sister was there. Teresa was there. Jean was. There was a bunch of us. We had a blast. We had a great, great time. Yeah. Sorry, I missed you guys that night. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you don't know someone. You've thrown an axe with the. 
<laughs> now you get to know somebody when they well, got listen, an axe in their hand yeah, right. and, and a drink in the other. <laughs> and you trust them, right? Like, you know, them. you're in the vicinity and you're giving them an axe and they're <laughs> drinking a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, he put this balloon in your mouth. I'm going to see if I can bust it with the axe. Yeah. <laughs> That's real trust. But uh, we're gonna give the, we're gonna give the award since nobody's really guessing, right? They're afraid to guess because they don't have a clue. Yet somehow, Rachel Sirota had, had nailed it on the head. Somehow, <laughs> going to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, also known as DEI. This is a really important topic. Um, one I really don't know a lot about. Uh, a little ashamed to say, uh, admittedly, I don't know a lot about it. Um, but we are gonna talk about this. And but you know. Stephanie, you're not really going to talk about it too much, are we? No, um, because we have a surprise guest tonight mm -hmm. that that person is going to talk about it. So before we bring our surprise guest on, I want to see who's going to guess who our surprise <laughs> guest is. So mm. if you think you know, put that person's name in the chat. Yeah, Teresa knows somehow. I know yeah. who it is. And Frankie wants to keep chiming in, telling me Frank if she knows. Frankie knows who it is. If we could just get a dog translator, I'm sure Frankie knows the answer. <laughs> but but here's a question, I guess, of the night. What's in Stephanie's mug? Oh, yeah, let's let's take that. before we got a couple minutes before I bring the surprise guest. What is in there? We know it's on it, but what's in it? Well, guess well it, everybody? listen, I, I have to again say, Sammy Vecchiola Sunshine made this for me. And I am drinking hot tea in my mug tonight. Hot tea. Hot tea. Hot tea is code for. <laughs> it's not code for wine. Yeah, it's Cabernet. It's not code for anything else. Sauvignon. <laughs> I, I prompt. Look, the tea bag is still in it. It's right here. Here's okay. the tea bag. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> Makers 45. <laughs> Wait, you're good friends with Justin. He knows you better than most of us. Well, no, the Makers actually is 46, and it's for uh, Mr. Larry Blackman. I don't uh, drink okay. whiskey. Uh, whiskey. I don't know. The people who know you, at least he says whiskey. I think they're onto something. <laughs> Teresa's like, it's just a prop. It's a prop. <laughs> and Angela, it's time for wine tea. Oh. Okay. 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 All right. So we got some guesses here as to who the special guest is. I don't know if <laughs> Teresa was just cheering for Sammy because she made your mug or she thinks Sammy's coming on. Hey, maybe. Yeah, I want to see. Who, who do you guys think is coming on? J and J. Is it Johnson and Johnson? Uh, not sure. Not uh, sure. Is it Barry? Uh, mm -hmm. Could be Barry. Barry is not here tonight. Barry told me he had something going on. He was at an event. I don't know what Barry could be doing that's better than this. I know. Well, Larry, you, know. Larry you, you can't take two guesses. Lulu or Mike. Yeah, one at a time, Larry. One at a time. Come you on. Know? You know the deal. <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> Don't so jump Teresa's, ahead. Oh, Teresa's clarifying. Sammy is your guess. That may be. Oh, maybe. maybe. She could be. She could be. But no matter what it is, it's always going to be based in, you know, how we make people feel. Otherwise, uh, Steph always sums it up. And so we are always attacking this from different angles we really kind of want to hold it up and look at culture and see all the different perspectives and see what goes into, you know, the, the recipe of culture. Because when you can nail this down, you can, you know, you know what it's done? I like this analogy is when you create a culture in your organization, you can move faster as an organization because everybody, you know, to that old corporate quote that, you know, Everybody's rowing in the same direction. Like they understand yeah, where together, we're going. Right. You're doing it together. You're you're part of a team. You you know your teammates. You understand them. You have a lot of the same values. Values that are the heart of culture. So it just makes things go faster because there's no confusion. You know, right. you're not going to walk in if you're of the culture and you understand. You're not going to walk in and be like, okay, what are we doing here? Um, right. What are they like? Can I trust them? It's not like that. Not like that at all. And as Tina likes to say, it's like trust transference, right? Trust transference. Yeah. And and just saying, Larry, you are not the guest. <laughs> <laughs> and just saying who it's not, right? I'm maybe not Angela saying knows who it is. Who it is? <laughs> maybe right. who it is. Or maybe yeah. we should just bring that person on. We're at 730. We should probably bring Yeah, like I this. think we should you just wanna... bring that person on. Yeah, this is this is a, a this is gonna be a sensitive topic. We're gonna keep it a little light though, because we know we can dive in deep. There's going to be a time we're going to talk about a way you can dive in deeper on this at another time. We're going to save that for a little bit later. 
but let's bring on that surprise guest. But first, I got to get rid of this this frame because it always gets in the way. So let me just yeah, turn this okay. off for a second here. Let's turn off all the props. Let's turn off all this stuff. And let's make way for our special guest. Welcome to Build It Through Culture Live. JJ, how you doing? Welcome, Jessica JJ. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me. Thank you for Thank coming. Really yeah. appreciate it. So JJ, would you please introduce yourself to everyone and let them know who you are and what you do? So I go by JJ. My full name is Jessica Gerard, and I have a private practice for mental health counseling for LGBTQ plus people. Um, so I do individuals, couples, family counseling, um, and so I'm glad you're doing this topic. I'm really excited to be a part of it. Thank yeah, you awesome. so much for being here. So can you tell everybody what the LMHC stands for? Yes. So it's for Licensed Mental Health Counselor. Um, it's my credentials. You'll often see with therapists, they list their credentials after their name um, so that you know they're qualified to see you. Awesome. Awesome. So how about we start tonight, JJ? Maybe you can share with everybody, what does DEI mean? <laughs> Um, so DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so I'm trying to make this pretty relatable to Master Networks because as you were talking, I was realizing there's so many ways that Master Networks, just by the structure of it, does practice DEI. Um, so for diversity, that is inviting people of various different backgrounds, just like people invite people of various different backgrounds to Master Networks. And equity is giving them all equal access and in some ways, going to Zoom is helpful for equal access. As you mentioned, people are able to attend a meeting in Brooklyn and attend another meeting in New Jersey. And um, so there's equal access to these meetings. There's no longer even a commute as a barrier. Right. Um, so, and then inclusion, it's being able to invite everybody to speak and participate and contribute. So just being... Yeah. We, we definitely do that one day. Yeah. I know that we're very yeah. intentional about that. I mean, at a very basic level, you know, Tina Campbell always taught me, we just want to get people talking to one another. And, yes. you know, the discussions are, are the key to, to understanding one another, to building the relationships. So we're always encouraging people when we, you know, get them into breakout rooms together. It's like, everybody, please, please give everybody a chance to speak because there's those quiet people like myself, a former shy guy, I would never talk. Unless, mm -hmm. unless asked to. Um, but it is sometimes I needed to be asked because whatever reason, I just wouldn't. So I would appreciate that. And of course, we always ask people to be positive too when we're breaking them out into rooms, right? Yes. Always be positive. That's super important because nobody wants to listen to a Debbie Downer. Right? <laughs> that's, that's not going to help anybody in business or in life. Yeah. So, yeah. And I thought it was interesting what you said, JJ, at the outset was um, that Master Networks kind of had it as part of their structure ready. Can you tell us what, what you mean by that? So just the very nature of when I got invited to Master Networks, it was because I met Luann, who's in my Danbury chapter, at a Pride uh, meeting in my little town. And she could have taken one look at me and that I looked too young, that I was maybe pretty inexperienced in my business and not invited me, but she invited me with open arms, really encouraged me to keep going. Um, so even though maybe I felt a little bit dem different demographically, I felt so welcome to be part of Master Networks. Um, and I imagine that's how a lot of people feel in Master Networks. Like it's so welcoming. People want to build a relationship with you. They want to get to know you. And that's all part of practicing diversity and inclusion. So um, just from my own personal experiences, I can attest to that. Yeah. So JJ, yeah, I mean, can, oh, go ahead, Rob, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, you know, I mean, the first time I walked in the room, at a, and again, a very basic level, it was the first room I walked in where I actually did feel welcome. Like people actually cared about me as a person and not just a business card. Yeah, yeah. they wanted to get to know you as the person that you are, right? Yeah. Not just what you do for business. Because let's, mm -hmm. let's be real, we talk about this a lot. And, and when we're talking about showcases, right, we always tell people when you're doing your showcase, it's super important to make it very personal, right? And to make it personal because people relate to people, right? So when you share 
some of your stories, some of your history. There have been amazing showcases this week that have gone on that I have been a part of. When you're sharing your story with people, you're relatable, right? And yes. then people connect with you on a different level. If you just talk business, it, there's no there's no real true connection there, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. that's super important to be doing. And all parts of you, like share, share where you grew up and your family and why you do what you do, right? That's the important part. You know, I used to have a member in the chapter that used to say, if your why doesn't make you cry, then it's just not good enough. <laughs> I love that. And, so, and I love that Mastermind Works really does ask about people's backgrounds and the why. I mean, how many other business related things ask that? So yeah. Um, yeah. it's. Um, Tina brings up a, a good point. Um, you know, talk about how DEI, how important it is for the community. And, you know, mm -hmm. we have a community in Master Networks, but any community that you're part of, you know, how important is it for, for this? Yeah, um, it's really important because even as I mentioned, like with Master Networks, people are so inviting. There's always people out there that maybe you're not considering inviting. And that could really help to grow Master Networks through what they can contribute and the positive impact it might have on them. Um, so that's just one way of why it's so important um, is that even now there are people maybe you're thinking of that you're like, maybe I should bring them to a meeting and it's good to reach out to them because just as you're probably helped by Master Networks, they could be, and they have things to contribute no matter where they are in their career. So, yeah. um, I mean, it's one thing, you know, um, and in building and starting chapters and building chapters, the, the culture for me, like my perspective on the culture is that, you know, I started building chapters because I loved the culture so much. I wanted to expand more opportunity for everybody to come in. And the way I look at it is just that if you feel good here, we want you in. Yeah. And there's like yes. no other criteria to me. And I don't know if that's good or bad, but there's no other criteria. If you feel good here and you feel like you fit and this feels welcoming to you, we want you in here. Right. And mm -hmm. if you can make a contribution, right? Like if you're giving of yourself and most of us all are in master networks, right? It's like, you know, um, we are really service minded people, right? So, you know, we want the people that want to be in the room, right? When we ask the question at the end of the meeting, what was your biggest takeaway? And people are sharing with us like, oh, the energy and you guys really like, care about each other we're like yeah yeah we really do care yeah. we want to help you right and, and so rachel's that's... bringing up a good point here you know um admittedly i don't know a lot about this and and rachel's saying where can we better be better in this area there's always ways to improve and become more diverse more equitable and more inclusive so for those of us who don't really understand what are some simple things that we can do or be conscious of like how where do we start if we want to make sure that we're adhering to this. Mm -hmm. And how is equity different from equality? Yes, yes, great questions. Um, and really just by starting by building your awareness, because we all have blind spots based off of our experiences through life. We don't know what somebody else's experiences are going to be or their values or what they can bring to the table. And sometimes just us trying to think about what other people want. I think I saw Teresa earlier say, that treating people how they want to be treated as opposed to treating them how you think they should be treated, how you think you would want to be treated. It can be very different than that. Hmm. Um, so just considering that, that inquires, uh, requires asking questions that may be a bit uncomfortable of how is this impacting you? How is this coming across? Am I including you enough in things? Um, it can be a simple, unfortunately, Master Networks is really great with this, but there are plenty of other meetings where you notice some people hardly speak at all. They're hardly invited to talk. They're pretty quiet. They sit back and just even extending, hey, like, I notice you've been a bit quiet. Like, do you want to share a little bit more of your thoughts on this? Um, really giving people the invitation to share, to get to know them um, is one way you can practice it in your day-to-day -day life in so many different avenues. But there are ways that you can really learn more about diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially in our 
day and age just through joining panels like we have one coming up on the 24th. There are so many books to read. There's so many podcasts out there. There's so many ways you can build your awareness for where your blind spots are and how to overcome them. Um, so this is just a start of all of that. All right, all right. It's, it's really good. I mean, because it, 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 I like that you said it starts with the awareness. And I, I think that's that's the part we probably stumble upon is we kind of want to know um, the, the tactics, but it starts with being at that moment where you can demonstrate this, this concept. If you're not aware of it, how could you even, you know what I mean? Otherwise it just goes yeah. right over your head and you don't even know what yeah. you're Like you're, you're not even in the game. And, mm -hmm. and is it, you know, like JJ said, it can be uh, an uncomfortable topic sometimes right but you know is it okay to ask questions and and are people open open to answering those questions right though i think that's important yeah yes so it is okay to ask questions but also be responsive to someone doesn't want to talk about this with you it can Absolutely. be very personal um so having worked with a lot of LGBTQ people, I often get a lot of really personal questions about things you wouldn't typically ask someone who you would, that's not transgender, for example, or someone who is heterosexual. Um, so you can ask a question, but also respect rejection of some of those questions that may be a little bit too personal for someone sure, to talk about. Sure, if it's too yeah. personal, they shouldn't feel, uh, no one should ever feel obligated to answer if they're not comfortable with the situation or a question asked of them anyway, mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, so can you, can you share with everybody the difference between equity and equality? Yeah. Um, and that's a great question because equity um, makes equal access for everybody. So if we just treat everyone equal, you'll find that there's not actually equal access to everything. Um, as a pretty blatant example, you wouldn't tell someone in a wheelchair you can use the stairs like everyone else to get into a building. You would help provide a ramp. So providing equal access to things allows people just to even be able to get to the table to have their voice heard. Um, so... Yeah, I was saying, I was having a conversation with Rob the other day, and I said to him, um, Rob, I'm sure you remember this. I used to tell my kids, like, I can't treat you equally. I have to treat you equitably, right? Like, I know what your strengths and weaknesses are, and I know what my other child's strengths and weaknesses are. And I can't expect them, right, to get the same grade or to be able to do it the, the same way because they're two different people. Exactly. Um, and we often make mistakes just by thinking, by treating everyone equally, that it's fair. Um, but in your example, that you're really taking into account the strengths and perhaps weaknesses of everyone involved and catering things so that they have equal opportunity for similar outcomes. Right. Like, you know, my, my one child would be an excellent math student and, you know, maybe not so good in another subject and the other one would be excellent in a different. So you can't, you, you can't treat it. You have to, you know, that's what you're strong at. So you can excel in that. And that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably wouldn't expect the same grades in math for the no. one who's not so good in math. Exactly. And that, so, you know, that's uh, an example there of equity. So, um, and even just earlier noticing that this was in, had subtitles, I got kind of happy to see that because I'm like, there's another example of equity for people who may have a hard time hearing or even just technology issues delaying sound. Right. There's another means to follow through with what we're saying here. So there's all kinds of ways to increase access and provide equity. Awesome. Yeah. You know, there's, I think the awareness part is a part, you know, I, I kind of dwell on it a little bit because um, nothing can really happen until a person is aware of um, the situation and how to demonstrate um, equity, say. And so the awareness, so wh what can we do to create awareness? Um, is there any resources for awareness? If it starts there, well, how do we even get it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, and those are great questions. So, um, in addition to asking questions of people around you who your actions may impact, 
Um, I really recommend doing um, reading on this topic, listening to podcasts, really listening to people with different backgrounds than you. Um, I find it pretty helpful being a white person, listening to like White Fragility um, by Robin, I think Siwa is her name. Um, that's a pretty well-known book. There's How to Be an Anti-Racist. Um, so those are some commonly read books on this topic that have helped a lot of people gain awareness. Um, there's awareness to a very different culture. So, you know, I've just mentioned some books that address racism, but there's so many more things. You might realize your blind spot is you can't relate to younger people in your life, or your blind spot is you can't relate to older people in your life, or your blind spot is you, for me, being childless, maybe I can't relate to parents. So I read more about that and try to talk to people who are parents and learn their perspective. Um, so those are some ways of really building awareness. It has to start with conversations and also just going out of your way to learn. And just being open, right? And being kind. Like it costs all of us nothing just to be kind yeah. to one another. I, th mm -hmm. I think that's like super important, you know, being respectful and being kind to the conversation and, you know, I, I don't know. So, so tell me. But Tina's got a good question here, Steph, if I could just interrupt. Oh, sure. a question. How can providing DEI training strengthen your business? So now it's related to business. How can you strengthen it? So it can strengthen in so many ways for when you're um, getting different perspectives for different problems you're facing in your business. So you're actually going to be a lot more effective in solving things versus if you have all people with similar backgrounds. Um, you're also probably going to serve your customers better because by having a more diverse staff or at least asking the appropriate questions of how can we serve people of different groups better, you're going to reach more people they're going to find whatever your service or product is more helpful and it's catered to them. Um, and it also helps if you have employees for them to work more effectively. Like you don't want any employees coming in and the top thing on their mind being, how is my coworker going to treat me today? You want right. them to be able to love their work, be passionate and work as efficiently as they can, not be concerned about, you know, these DEI issues that may be negatively impacting them. And you want them to feel that their voice is heard, that they can contribute and want to keep doing that. So um, so I could go on and on about so many ways you could strengthen <laughs> your business. Um, so um, I love that. Yeah. Jean brings up something. This is interesting. What is the power of being seen for who you really are and accepted? So um, there's so much power to that because often, to, and especially in like business related ventures, we feel like we're kind of putting on a facade, maybe like I'm representing my personal brand, but not me. Um, but actually being seen and heard, it feels a lot more real. It feels like you can be yourself. You can have genuine connections. So I think back to like my first couple of face-to-faces through Master Networks before I really kind of knew what it was. And I was about building a relationship, so not just about business. I went into these face-to-faces thinking like, do you have clients for me? Like, what, like, and, am I supposed to have clients for you? <laughs> um, and it was pretty awkward in the beginning and realizing, no, they actually just want to meet with me and know about my life and respect what I'm doing. And that's pretty awesome. And it made me feel really seen and heard. Um, right. And so I in turn started to do that to other people rather than just going through it with like, what business transaction can I gain from each interaction I have? So. Well, just know you're not the only one that has done that. We have all done that at one time yes. or another, right? Because that's what we were told in the beginning. Or or maybe we might not have even been told that. That was our perception of it, yes. right? So there's yes. a big difference there. So, so um, we have to wrap this up in a minute, but I want to let everybody know that... Um, our region is doing a panel discussion and JJ is going to be a part of it. And that's going to happen on the 24th of this month at noon. Oh, yes. all right. Okay. That helped? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so, and 
But something that's really exciting about this is it's just uh, an intro to DEI, but we have some really great speakers for this. So we have Greg Knowles, who works with people with disabilities, and we have Yvette Sanchez, and she has helped to implement a lot of DEI programs at our company, which is London Stock Exchange, um, and myself included. So we're all going to be talking a little bit deeper about DEI and giving you some more concrete tools for what to explore after this and how to be a good ally. Yeah, yeah, so Tina just reiterated there with our panel. And, you know, it should be I love the fact that it's a panel discussion. So we're getting different perspectives on how they're perceiving this, their expertise in it. And that really will, I think, will help us put together um, a little bit more, a better picture for those attending as to what this means for all of us and how we could be aware of it and then make progress towards it. Yeah, and be mindful, right? Be we can all be more mindful, and and you guys can all help us with that, and and giving us some some education on how we can do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna be wrapping up here in a minute, JJ. But you want to maybe give us some uh, parting thoughts for for the people here uh, before we wave bye bye. Yeah, well, just by being here and part of this conversation, you're starting to do some of the work and really continuing that. And it's part of your everyday life. It doesn't just mean attending panels. It just also means just like asking questions to the people in your lives about how some of the things you say or do, how that might impact them. Um, and really asking in sensitive ways. So, you know, get a sense for if someone really wants to have this conversation with you um, as well. Right. Respecting the answer either way. So that my takeaway from what you just said and what we've been hearing is ask questions. So don't be afraid to engage in that conversation. But going back to the whole idea of culture of how you make people feel, think about the question you're going to ask and how it's making the other person feel. And let's have a, a sensitive conversation to educate ourselves and be more aware. Is that what I'm yeah. hearing? Yes. Yes. And that might mean hearing a very different perspective than your own, but it's also valid. It's their lived experience. So. That's right. And you can't take away what someone else feels, right? They're exactly. Everybody is entitled to how they feel and their perception of it. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So, all right. So we're going to wave uh, goodbye to JJ. Uh, thank you, JJ, so much for coming again. It's right up there. Um, March 24th at noon, Courageous Conversation and Introduction to Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Um, please put that on your calendars. Um, we'll have you know the specific information rolling out as to where that's going to be. Um, but please don't miss it. Uh, thank you, JJ, for coming. Appreciate your time, taking the time out tonight out of your uh, your personal life and your busy schedule to to meet with us. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. Right. We appreciate you. Right. Thank you so much. Go for check having out me JJ at the Danbury Chapter Wednesdays at eight. Yes, all are welcome. All right. Bye, JJ. Bye, JJ. Bye. Have a good night. Thanks. All right. That was, wow, that was a great, great she conversation. Is, she is so sweet. She is, uh, um, I just yeah. have a lot of respect for her. So thank you for all the hard, all the amazing work that you do for the LGBTQ community, JJ. Uh, we all appreciate you. So um, yeah. thank you so, so much. Yeah. And a lot of positive comments in the chat there. Everybody really appreciates uh, you, JJ, coming by. I mean, there's a lot of love going on here. Um, so hope, hopefully, you know, we've all learned a little bit more. At least I know we're scratching the surface and we did want to keep it light for this. But that event on March 24th is where we're going to really be getting into it. Um, so we will be there. We hope to see you there. And Steph, you want to start? Let's start wrapping this up here. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about it this time as we wrap it up. All right. So listen, of course, it always goes back to how you make people feel right. So regardless of your conversations, always be mindful of how you're making someone else feel. Yeah. Um, that could potentially be bringing in new members or that could be, you know, hey, look, you're looking for new friends or whether it's business or in your personal life. You should we should all be cognizant of how we're making people people feel the other person in the conversation make sure it's not a one-sided conversation where only one person is talking that there's banter back and forth um yeah. 
Yeah. I think you should play the song again. The song? Should I play the song? Again? I think you I'm should early. play the song. Yeah, we got like five minutes left. We would play the I'll... song. Let's let's do this first. Let's talk about. So you know you you know all know if if you've been here before that we're coming at you every two weeks um, with with this culture live. And the next episode is is episode number eleven, uh, March twenty fourth. So it is the same um, date, but not the same time. All right. So. Right. The panel discussion on DEI is at noon. We are going to be live at 7 p.m. on March 24th. So you got two great events to attend um, for that day. And that is will be a surprise topic as well. You just again, if you've not done it already, like the Master Networks page and you're going to be notified when this is going to be coming out. Yeah. And guys, again, please remember to be sharing this to your pages when we go live and you guys hop on, because again, it, it, it extends our reach farther and we can, we can impact more people that way. I'm sorry. I, I'm giggling here because she says, turn it up to 11. Okay. If you know that reference, please put it in the chat, turn it up to 11. All right. There's a, there's a, there's a reference there. See what kind of pop culture um, people I don't we know what that here. means. <laughs> Why don't I know what that means? Is it I don't know. song or Turn something? It up to Eleven, All right? But um, <laughs> but but you know what? You know, Steph's got a great um, the mug there. It's great. We don't just do business together. We do life together. And you know, in this hashtag Network for Life, why don't you just start putting this on uh, some of your posts? Because this Network for Life, this is um, this means a couple of different things. This is not just the way I look at Master Networks as I network for, for life, you know, for the life that I need, the life that I need to form. It's kind of like that lifeline, but it's all, this is my network for life. There is no oh, other, yeah. network. no other network for me. There, there is no other. And through master networks, the networks we've built with each other are so powerful, so powerful. So this hashtag is network an for amazing life. community, right? We have this yeah. amazing community, share this amazing community with other people. Yeah. Don't keep this a secret. We have Teresa such a good it. time here. Teresa got it. This is Spinal Tap, all right? So that's the movie <laughs> reference that's used. This one goes to 11. Yeah, this one does go to 11, episode 11. So <laughs> this is great. Thank you, Angela, for coming by. It loves this community. Uh, we're going to wind it down now. Yeah, you know, Angela um, goes live a lot of the times. I think she's probably she's probably going to be doing a live after this meeting. So it, it, after this live. So if she goes live, go support Angela on her live. Um, she, she does jewelry and she does like a trivia. It's a whole lot of fun. So if Angela goes live, hop over to her live and check her out too. It's a good yep. time. There's the fight out of holla. <laughs> yes. Oh, Tina. Hey, Tina. Tina Mallon, that is from Tennessee. Love this community. Yeah. Ditto, Tina. Ditto. Love this community too. So we, I believe we have some thank you, Steph. Do we thank you? Do we thank you? Of yet? course. So first and foremost, let's thank Renee Pride for giving us the opportunity to do this on um, the eighth page. So thank you to Renee. Um, of course, thank you to Chaz Wilson for starting all of this and our amazing regional uh, regional partner, Miss Tina Campbell, who is the queen of culture who started this whole region and um, who's a huge mentor to you and I both. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, without these people, um, we're not doing the show. We'd have no reason to, um, but because of what they poured into our lives, we just want to perpetuate it. We want to perpetuate the culture. We want this to be kind of a national movement, um, definitely inside of Master Networks, but this is the kind of stuff that spreads outside too. And Steph, you always say it first, right? It's this three, three words you always say. Go out there and spread love, people. Spread Just the love, everybody. Spread the love. Spread the love. All right, that is it for tonight. We want to thank you all for coming. Yeah, we knew this was an easy one. To respect, Aretha, of course. Uh, we thought it was appropriate for this, but thank you, everybody, for coming. Please come back next uh, next episode in two weeks. Please bring somebody. Share it with people because we really, this community, what we do right here would not be the same without you. So, everybody, have a good night. We will have see a you great, next time. Great night, and remember to respect each other and spread yeah. that love. Yep. See you next time. Bye.